Broadcasting live from the Jersey Shore, it's Coach Kev on the Damage 365 Radio Network. And welcome back, everybody, to another exciting episode of the Indie Super Show here on the Damage 365 Radio Network. This is episode number 34. I'm your host, Coach Kev. I will be joined a little later around the 6 o'clock hour by Nick the Beard, who will be calling in via satellite. And at this time, without further ado, we are going to bring in our guest of the day, WWE Hall of Famer Greg the Hammer Valentine. Greg, welcome to the show. Thank you, guys. I was waiting for you to call me, but uh, I had a premonition. I better call you. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. We like premonitions, especially when they're a positive one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Like, w- let's get right into it. You know. F- you know. No beating around the bush. I got a bunch of questions for you. We'd like to ask. Um, First things first, we're going to start with your career before we get into the uh, the topic of the day. Um, when was it that you decided that you wanted to become a professional wrestler? Like, what was your inspiration? 1969, and uh, on the road with my father, Johnny Valentine, in Texas. So you, your dad was your inspiration. You wanted to be like your dad, so you got you got right into the family business. Absolutely, because I mean, I grew up in Seattle, and there wasn't a lot of wrestling on TV out there. I think we got Portland, Oregon wrestling, but you know, I laughed at that. But uh, when I went on the road to see him in Texas and uh, and watched his matches, and you know, I was I was so impressed. I was I wanted to do. I wanted to be just like him. All right, all right. It's, it's a good, it's a, it's a good uh, feel good story, you know, Dad. I didn't want to, I didn't want to be like any other wrestler. Right. I wanted to be like him because he made it look real. And that's that is the uh, the whole purpose, uh, you know. Now I don't know anymore. <laughs> well, that's that's what my next question was going to be about. Now, do you consider yourself a professional wrestler or do you consider yourself a sports entertainer? No, they be both. I'm sorry. Maybe <laughs> Paul. Uh, I, I entertain in my interviews, and so, you know, I entertain by slipping my blonde hair around and wearing the fancy robes and, and working the crowd a little bit. But I, I never really, you know, I just look, used to make faces at them, and, and, you know, I really didn't have to do much. All I had to do was look at them, and, and they would boo me. <laughs> but my main thing was what I did in the ring, and I what I did in the ring. I didn't need approval from anybody except myself, and of course my opponent had to go along with it. But uh, and if he didn't, sometimes I just beat him up. So <laughs> okay. Um, now we, we got to get to the, the, the topic of uh, of the pretty much for the month. Uh, usually topics are, are kind of like here and there, but y- you made a comment that's been lingering around the internet and has got uh, a lot of people kind of up in arms. Uh, I'm going to read the, the comment and then I want you to, um, I guess, comment on it and clarify it. But th- th- this was the comment that was supposedly said during another radio interview f- uh, from you. Uh, as far as girls wrestling, I would send them all out to the strip bar and fire them. I'd fire every girl wrestler I saw. <laughs> They don't draw any money. They have horrible matches. They're terrible. That's the way I feel. They take jobs from the men that need to support their families. They should be home washing dishes and cooking and being pregnant and barefoot. I love women, but they got to realize their place. They're not supposed to be wrestlers. They're not supposed to be MMA fighters or boxers. It's bullshit. (laughs) That must have been the way I really felt at that one day. Um... (laughs) But I mean, I love girls, and I love I love to watch girl wrestling, and I'm impressed with it. And uh, that was just a line of uh, 
crap that I was throwing out that day, probably because I was stuck in Cleveland, for one. <laughs> I mean, that's going to put you in a bad mood anyway. And then, uh, you know, it was it was a terrible Comic-Con, and there was a lot of girl wrestling, girl wrestling. And it was, But you know what? I mean, the girls were good, and uh, maybe I was jealous, but uh, somebody just hit me on the wrong court. I did, you know, they talked me into going to do this podcast, and I didn't want to do it. Mm-hmm. I thought it wasn't getting any further out than... Cleveland, and uh, you know, I'm not wasn't really familiar with all the podcast phenomenon going on. I did do one with Piper, mm-hmm. God bless him, and uh, so I was just kind of like, uh, I, I, you know, I just there was nobody there, and uh, I really said it as just to get a reaction. Okay. I really don't mean that. I don't mean they should be all home, pregnant, and and all that kind of stuff. I mean. Jim Nighthart's daughter, I know her, and I know Rick Flair's daughter, and and I, I I see a lot of athletic potential. My wife loves watching the Divas, so I was I was uh, you know I I was joking, but I was in a bad mood, but I didn't mean it. It wasn't from the heart. So it's all it's all Cleveland's fault. It basically is because it got me in a bad mood. I swear, I mean, I, I was stuck in Cleveland for five days, not making any money, but I finally did make some money because a guy came through, but I thought he was going to screw me around. And uh, it all turned out really, really good. And uh, and I was talking to a lot of girl wrestlers, too. And uh, and I've, I've known so many great girl wrestlers in my generation. Mm-hmm. You know, I'd go out and watch it, you know, like, Moolah and Wendy Richter and, and of course Medusa and I mean it was just there was a lot of good wrestling talent and uh, and I was impressed that women could make it look that good and there's been ones 10 years ago or something that, that I remember uh, one of them, a couple of them they put in the Hall of Fame that were, that were good wrestlers so yeah I mean you got the I don't, I don't, I don't be, be honest with you I I do not think a woman, unless it was an all women's league, could carry a main event. Uh, you know, I mean, maybe they could get up to a co-main event or something, but the men still, you know, right. the men, the men are men, and so are the women, and uh, the men are the ones that, that I was trying to say, the men are the ones that people buy tickets to the see to get the other guys get his ass kicked at least for my generation that was it right okay uh, that, that's fair I mean we all thought and, you were, and, we all thought you were cutting a heel promo because you have a whole bunch of conventions well, you, coming you know up. what it was because I was in a bad mood because I was in <laughs> Cleveland so it really was a heel promo <laughs> and somebody called me Donald Trump and you know what I, I love Donald Trump and, I, and I'm going to vote for him but uh, I'm not Donald Trump <laughs> I wish, <laughs> but I mean, he said some derogatory things against women. But you know what? It backfired on him, and he had to apologize. Well, he really didn't apologize, but he realizes he, you know, he's like a, a bulldog, and and I'm not really as bullish as he is. But I, you know, I'm I was a rugged, tough wrestler, and and I never admitted to like. I don't even like watching any other guy wrestling. You know, I mean, but. Just between me and you, I still watch it, but <laughs> <laughs> well, and I I will, and I and I I see good matches. I saw a good match the other night, so I um, it's hard being out of the game and watching wrestling on TV because I could still go, you know, even though I'm older now, and I and I still do independence, and uh, you know, you just get you, you know, it's 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 hard. It'll never leave my body wrestling. Uh, if my dad would have lived past that uh, 72, he said he, and if he hadn't had the plane crash of Ric Flair, he said he would have wrestled to his 70. <laughs> I thought he was crazy. But here I am, 64 years old the other night, and I wrestled two shows out in Michigan. And I loved it, you know. So it's all about, you know, being in shape and being lucky enough to keep your body together. You know, and and you know what? The women nowadays, 
my God, we didn't have we didn't have drill vessels that looked like these. I mean, they're all tens, you know. Yeah. So <laughs> they're all tens. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! So I, originally I was going to blame it on Andrew Anderson, but um, Cleveland's better. That's uh, <laughs> he wasn't with me, and and Andrew Anderson got on my ass, and I'll stick up for him on that one. He says, "What the <laughs> hell are you doing, man?" I go, "I was just in a bad mood, and I didn't mean it." And uh, but yeah, he's he's my he's my uh, my son. I mean, adopted son. He's he's a uh, you know he's twenty years probably younger than me, and and he is. He has just been a great guy for me, get me in touch with all the independent people in, in New York and and the comic cons and I mean he helps he helps me and I mm-hmm. likewise I help him out and I give him a rub too and I love the guy, you know. No, he's a good we had him on the show uh, earlier this year, uh really good interview. He's uh uh he's a really good guy. Oh, he can talk, person, man. Yeah. He can talk. Yeah, he, he likes to talk. <laughs> but it's okay, that's what we're here for. <laughs> Um, you actually, you actually had some shows coming up. I see with uh, yourself uh, and Andrew Anderson and the Nasty Boys at Chilla Theater. Right. So you could probably looking forward to sitting down with uh, Knobs and Sags. I'm sure you guys will reminisce about some good stuff. Yeah, I'm not worried about the wrestling match because I can outrun both of them. But, uh... <laughs> uh, let's as see. As long as I don't have to take the big splash. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, yeah, with the Chiller Theater, we're doing that together, and we're doing some matches uh, afterwards, and uh, mm-hmm. that'll be a lot of fun. And then he's uh, let's see, January. Uh, well, before we get to January, we got November fourteenth at the big event. You're going to be with Andrew Anderson and Brutus Beefcake. Absolutely, and I think we're doing some uh, wrestling afterwards too. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think me and Beefcake are doing some tagging up and and. You know, I always loved that. He was my favorite partner. I think New York kind of fell in love with the Dream Team because we always get a good oh, response when we come up there, man. Yep, one of the, I mean, one of the really best, one of the best tag teams. Uh, both of these were uh, tag team champions together. So, yeah, it was, it was sad when they, it was sad when they broke us up. I mean, they just they were hell bent on sending him to be a baby face. And, yeah. Uh, then they put me with Dino Bravo, and then I quit. So, well, that's not saying much for not Dino, Dino Bravo. Not Dino's fault. Not <laughs> Dino's fault. It's just I, I wanted beef. I wanted my beefcake back. <laughs> so anyway, I ended up going single again. So it's all good. It all worked out. Yeah, I mean, beefcake went on to uh, uh, wear some interesting uh, outfits that looked like they uh, went through a shredder, and they gave him a pair of hedge clippers and. The rest is history. Yeah, I, God bless him. Randy Savage turned him on to that guy over there that, in in Tampa that made all that guard for him. <laughs> it was definitely different, and it and it suited him. And he really got over as a baby face mm-hmm. until he had that horrible crash where he got his face smashed nice. in, and then that that just that knocked him for a loop. And but he made a comeback, and and he's made it all the way back now in my opinion, and uh, look forward to seeing him up there in November. As, as do we. Uh, you mentioned Randy Savage. Um, I know I spoke to you at Legends of the Ring last year. I was doing uh, individual interviews with people who worked with Savage for our tribute show, and I reminded you that the only match you guys ever worked together was at WrestleMania Four in the tournament. H- how did you guys avoid not having more than that one match? Oh, he just probably didn't want to work with me. <laughs> Thought I was too stiff. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, you know, it's, it's we were both, of course, villains, heels, mm-hmm. whatever you want to call it, and uh, we were always. But he did turn. By the time he made a turn, I think I was gone, okay. uh, or I was in tag teams. That's what it was, because we up to WrestleMania four. You know, we that was a surprise. 